Nets a 116-109 win over the Knicks. Time to hear from Brooklyn's head coach, Steve Nash. Hey, Coach, um, under under the circumstances, all the news surrounding the team, second half of a back-to-back, shorthanded, what pleased you most about your team's performance tonight? Yeah, the professionalism, you know, uh, interesting day-to-day and uh, a back-to-back, like you said, and, and uh, the fifth and seven nights. So, you know, they came out and uh, were, were professional, uh, did a great job defensively, moved the ball offensively, made simple plays, didn't turn it over, you know, battled on the boards. So, you know, overall, really proud of the way they played under uh, what was it? It was a long week. How did you feel about Kevin, uh, his first game uh, playing on the second half of back to back? He looked good to me. Uh, you know, he, <laughs> he, uh, he got to his spots and continues to find his rhythm. Uh, you know, he, he made plays for his teammates again. And, uh, you know, I, I, like I said before the season, I, you know, I think it's 15 to 20 games minimum for him to start to even consider where am I. So uh, he looks great, and he's going to continue to feel more and more comfortable. Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, Steve, last night uh, Kevin talked about the uh, professionalism of uh, Bruce Brown. Uh, what kind of role do you see him growing into uh, with this team, even if it's off the bench. Yeah, I mean, he's he he plays extremely hard. Um, prides himself on his defense. Uh, offensively, you know, he plays within himself. I mean, he, he, I've been really impressed with his finishing and his, his floaters, and uh, you know, making the defense pay for his cutting. And and you know, I think when you when you have a guy like that who can guard multiple positions, he he plays hard. He he knows the game plan, and he also knows where he shouldn't put himself offensively, you know, that's really valuable. So it's great to have him for, you know, his energy, toughness, defense. And tonight, obviously, we and, and, and not just tonight, he's been rebounding the ball in regard. Tonight, he was exceptional, um, 14 rebounds. So really proud of the way he's, he's, he's chipped away and uh, super valuable to us tonight. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Steve, I'm, I'm wondering what you saw that you can take to the film room from the end of the game there where you just you have this sizable lead and then maybe the, the lack of the art of holding the ball lets them get back in the game and Kevin ends up back out on the court. Sure. You know, I mean, it's, it's tricky. You know, when you make wholesale changes like that uh, to a group that has no rhythm, um, you know, you have another – the other team has nothing to lose. So you can kind of see it coming in a way, but you want to give them that opportunity to learn and grow. So there's some things we can teach and clean up, uh, but it's also just good for them to feel that, feel that tension when you're trying to hold on to a lead. Um, so I, I thought it was valuable for, the, for them to feel that and, and uh, learn from it. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, Steve. I saw Arjun come over to your pregame and, and – give you the little hug. Is it a similar moment coaching against your godson as it is someone like Lloyd, or is it a different different sentiment with a college buddy and your godson? It's similar and different. You know, obviously, uh, it's, you know, with Lloyd, I I mean, I root for him all the time, and, and we go back so long, and he means a lot to me. Um, you know, with RJ, it's weird, because I, I, you know, I, I pray for every shot of his to go in. And tonight, when you're playing against him, it's it, it puts that in a in a perilous position. So, um, but it, it's a pleasure to to watch him grow and and continue to develop. And he's still 20 years old and just finding his footing in this league. He's got a lot of tools and talent, and most importantly, he's he's a tough cookie. So, um, it, it was it was a special experience for me to coach against him, and and uh, I'm always rooting for him. And it's been a joy for me to to watch him develop and and play. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Steve, you touched on it. Uh, obviously, you would have probably preferred not to have to put Kevin back into the game. But, I mean, when you consider 36 minutes in the last game, I think you put 30 on his legs here. I mean, how big of a deal is it for him to be able to have a performance like this when this is the first time he's you know playing under those kind of back-to-back circumstances? I think it's a, another marker for him that, that builds his confidence and – you know, continues to build that adaptation process to, to the demands of the game. You know, this, this season is, is unique, as we continue to say, and can't stress it enough. You know, the amount of five games and seven nights and basically playing four games a week, um, you know, it is something you have to be very careful with and, and manage for everybody, let alone Kevin who's coming off a, 
a career threatening injury. So uh, it's incredible the position he's put himself in and, and he looks uh, terrific, but a long way to go and we got to be smart and try to figure out where he needs his breaks. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey coach, uh, is there any added feeling uh, getting a win at Madison Square Garden uh, against the Knicks since you're coaching the other team in New York? You know, it's a, it's, it's a shame. The garden without fans just doesn't seem right. So, um, you know, it, it obviously we'll take any win we can get, um, you know, but uh, it, it's not the same without fans, frankly. Um, but that's the world we live in and we continue to chip away. And we, we you know, players in this league are, are coming out and finding juice and energy and playing hard, regardless of the amount of games, the condensed schedule and, and the fact that there's no fans in the building. So um, we continue to, uh, to get, comfortable with the new set of circumstances.